there are always challenges in terms of never being able to quite match what one would do in a first world country, um, having the range of equipment that's available at the drop of a hat. But, uh, but certainly in South Africa, we believe that what we have got available um, for clients in rental, um, and as well as what, what we can bring in um, for them, uh, is we've never, we've never faced the challenge of a job yet that we couldn't, we couldn't provide lifting for. The, um, you tend to find that in South Africa you, use, you will use smaller machines than you would in Europe, and that just by the nature of big machines, big freight, big cost. So you tend to find that you will use probably more more cranes of a smaller capacity than, than bigger cranes than in Europe. And at the same time, you also going to be always cognizant of South Africa will never, as long as we have labour, be as mechanised as what the first world will be. Yeah, it's important that we in fact have utilisation of labour as well. So it's, it's a mix. It's a mix between what we can supply and uh, and uh, and what the requirements are on that side. But anything, whether it's a whether it's a nuclear power station, ordinary coal-fired power station, a hydroelectric scheme, uh, high-rise building in Sandton, Cape Town, or wherever, we can we can always provide the lifting. One, one of our promises to our clients, and it started off, it started off in 1982 as being almost a lukewarm promise because nobody ever did it. But we would say to a client, buy a train from us. If you don't have use for it, we will, we will hire it for you. And when the first situation came, and, and we found a client a home for his train to go to, he was chuffed. Um, the longest, and, and it's quite, it's quite a, a an amusing anecdote. One of our clients, we had his claim, he owned it for 10 years, of which we used it for seven and he used it for three. But both happy. Um, and, and, and even now, even if it's not a claim we sold to a client that we rent out, we always keep our fingers on the tab in terms of what, what our clients have on the ground, available on the ground. If before we will bring in another crane, if we all our rental machines utilised, we will first talk to our clients. If they have machines on the ground, they rent them to us. They have a good track record of having rented to us. Um, we've got a very track record of being able to supply. So if, at times you, you, know, you, you can say that optimum size of rental fleet. This is nobody ever knows. But let's assume that you said the optimum size is 20, and there's suddenly demand for 30. Well, there's nothing better than being able to supply the full demand, of which 10 might not have been yours, they might have been clients. Um, and it, it helps to keep everyone happy, and it helps to keep... There's nothing, nothing worse than having dead cranes lying on the ground. That has changed. It's had, it's, it has been a mindset change. When, when I started as a French, it was unthinkable amongst the major contractors, that you could, for example, talk to Marion Roberts about using a Group 5 train. That um, was just completely off the radar screen. It's taken time for it to, to evolve, that all the equipment is available for each other. There are clearly some people that, you know, and I mean we do normal credit checks with everybody, there are some people that wish to, wish to hire, um, they do not do it really. <coughs> Where we won't do it, you'll find somebody in the market will do it, and, and it really be that's, that ends in tears. But um, so uh, you know, uh, but over a long period of time, over 35 years, we've, we've driven it off extremely little in terms of bandit. On our smaller, smaller equipment, telescopic handlers, um, uh, hoists, we uh, we generally have. And on the odd occasion, also self-directing train that we bring in for promotion, we will have um, new, uncommitted to a client. But in, gen but in general terms, with our, with our bigger tower trains, the range is too big to ever make a decision of what do you keep in stock. So our theory is that we would rather um, service out of an extensive rental fleet, 
And if a client has made a late decision to buy a crane, which is not normally the case, they normally have, from the time they decide to buy a crane, they've probably got three or four months before they need to be on site. But just assume that somebody always believed he was going to rent and then changes his mind and decides he wishes to purchase. And he needs, he needs the crane in two weeks' time. We can't supply a brand new crane, but we'll put one of our rental cranes on and he'll start his job, we'll order his crane, and when his crane arrives, we'll swap. Um, it's something that can be done practically any site, anywhere. Um, it can be done over a weekend. We've done it frequently, um, and it keeps everybody happy.